Okay, this is uh, my fifth video. Uh, it's been a while since I've done the fourth video. And this is just a, a quick one. The coronavirus is going on right now. Um, I made this presentation on March 15th. And today is March 17th. Uh, so some of the numbers, it, it's pretty close to what the original numbers are. Just let me get through it. Yeah. Uh, you know, when people view this later, you know, like in April and May, the concept still will apply. You just have to plug in your own numbers and see if you want to, uh, take a shot at it, um, play from start. So uh, I'm calling this the 8,900% gain, uh, a play on the coronavirus has pulled, especially silver down really low. And uh, well, let me talk about it. Here's, here's some disclaimer stuff. This video is really, I, I'll let you read all this, but it's, this is just motivational. You know, the coronavirus is going on right now. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, negativity out there, but there's a lot of buying opportunity because everything's, you know, bargain basement pricing. And the idea is to buy low and sell high. So uh, I just, saying some stuff there. Uh, I'm not trying to pump up the stock. I don't get enough views to do that. Um, I got less than 50 views and, uh, you know, until I get up there with the annoying orange, I don't even know if that's my goal because I'm not monetized or anything. Well, enough of that. Let's get in there. Um, you're going to have to watch my other videos if you want to, uh, I guess you call it a proof of that number. I mean, it's maybe it's not a, a proof, but uh, that is the number that I think gold is going to. So gold is obviously a, a very extremely undervalued at this point. I think it's, you know, well, it did drop down to 1500. Uh, and I think it's about 15. Well, it fluctuates, but I think it's around 1530 right now or something like that. Um, so that's a missing step, uh, videos one through four, go check them out. And here is, uh, you know, the main concept on videos one through four is that, uh, gold is going to 62.95. You just have to go watch, uh, the videos and I, well, that's my estimate, and and uh, that's just the number, and it's the exact number, but, the, you know, the calculation just came up with that number, and it comes up with a date, too. It actually comes up with an exact date, but it's in, uh, it's about four years into the future, um, and this is the Dow Gold Ratio. And of course, we're past that point now. We're in March. And uh, at the time of this video, the coronavirus is causing, it, it's kind of the pin that's pricking the bubble that was already there. I think everybody's focused on the pin, which is the coronavirus, I suppose, or maybe it's the oil prices. I don't know, but the bubble's always been there. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to focus in, I just did this so that you would uh, notice that this future date, we're concerned with that, and we're also concerned with this, January 1980, because that was the last time the Dow Gold hit one. Well, it didn't hit exactly one. I mean, actually here I've calculated it to be 0 0.62, so it's going below one. So just saying Dow Gold 1 is conservative, actually. It could go beyond that <clears throat> quite a bit, uh, down to 0 0.62. And here it was slightly above 1. And I can't remember exactly what those numbers are. But, you know, it, 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 the theory that I've always heard, uh, I haven't ever seen this theory, uh, but 
uh, the theory that I've always heard is that the Dow gold always returns to one. And so we're going to look at uh, the gold-silver ratio in January of 1980. And um, since this is analogous to this rather than, you know, maybe one of these other points where, uh, like, like for example, right here, uh, gold hit a high right there. I'm saying, and the gold silver ratio hit a low, but I'm saying let's use this number for two reasons. Number one, it correlates here. It's more like this than it is this, so it therefore the the gold silver ratio could go down to you know whatever that number is right there. Uh, about 15 or 16, 17. I, I've got it on another sheet here. And it looks like it's about 31 or 32 right there. So I'm saying it's going here because of this. And this is for motivational purposes. This will make our calculation bigger. So that's the whole point of this. Uh, so I needed this number. And the only thing you need to notice here is that in 1980, uh, $38.30 an ounce, uh, you can get that from a lot of, well, there's the name of the website there, I guess. Um, you know, this data is March 15th, and I believe this number right here has actually dropped lower. It's in the 12, so... I think it's near this number right now as we speak. It's gone back up to that number the gold has, but silver is a, silver's a great buy. So this is an even, uh, silver right now is an even better buy than when I did this calculation. So in a way that makes it conservative. Okay, so the silver rate of return, the metal, I've got the calculations here. And uh, you can follow through them. And it uses the gold-silver ratio. And I come up with $356. For in four years, uh, you know, gold is going to be $62.95. Uh, according to these calculations, and uh, silver is going to be $356. Of course, if I plug in 1250, which is what silver is about right now, or 1280 or whatever it's fluctuating, um, the concept is the same. It's a really high gain, okay, for four years. And uh, that's an average rate of return of 578%. Uh, and the, the point of this is, would you wait till exactly it hits 356? No, nah, you would probably bail out at 200 or maybe even 150. You'd be happy with what you made. The point is, the time is now uh, to, at least for me anyway, uh, this is not advice. The time is already there to be buying silver for, for uh, with the actual metal. And then I'm going to talk about a miner uh, next. Uh, what about the miners? Now the miners have dropped for no logical reason. And I say, see anecdotal section of the presentation. Well, I didn't really write that in there because I, it's already two days later. I'll just tell you that some of the anecdotal stuff is that silver is uh, the the energy prices have dropped, so the silver miners have uh, instant profit on that because they have left less costs to bring the metal out of the ground. And the other th the anecdotal information is that uh, silver is mostly, and I forget the exact ratio, but let's just call it half, just for the sake of argument, most of the silver that comes out of the ground is ancillary, uh, which means it's uh, it's mine. It comes out of the ground with zinc and copper and lead and other uh, uh, metals. And right at the exact time that uh, 
the economy is crashing and there's a monetary demand for silver, um, its supply is going to be markedly less. So there's going to be, for the physical silver, there's going to be a lot less physical silver because uh, the miners that produce copper, uh, their boom time is when uh, they're, they're cranking up the copper when, um, you know, when it's economic boom times. Well, when it's bad times, they shut down or cut back and and a lot of the silver that's produced is not going to be produced. So it's kind of a double whammy. It's a perfect storm, actually. So, uh, you know, that's 578%. And I needed this number right here. So that's all that is. 48.60 is the, uh, that would be the price of the silver hit on eight, in April of 2011. And so now I plug some of these numbers in here. So that indeed is, even though today's the 17th and this has dropped a little bit, uh, this concept still applies, you know, it's actually better. Uh, and the gold-silver ratio is 104 uh, today, uh, you know, on the chart. Again, just to go back to that chart, we're looking at, if gold is undervalued, silver relative to gold is undervalued. So silver is undervalued squared, and it does like gold. And I just thought of something here that uh, might be worth looking into. This, it drops to a low at, at the peak prices, and right right up here it tends to be uh gold tends to be a low price so when this thing you know gets down here it might be time to bail out of gold as well because it's kind of signaling that uh the bull run is over uh, in gold in Brent, any either gold or silver um let's see where was i Four, uh okay so i plugged in some numbers i just pulled that off because that was the end of December. Now we're, 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 we're still moving down this uh, channel uh, even more quickly now than we were before uh, in the Dow Gold Ratio. You have to watch the first few videos to understand that. But here we go. Is and I'm not recommending this stock, but... Uh, I, it's showing right here at this time, it's 256. I actually kind of lucked out. I think I got in at almost the exact low, 225. But I, I think for the calculation, I'm assuming you can uh, get in at, oh, what am I assuming here? $3. Uh, it is 256 now. Maybe it'll be higher by the time you see this. But the concept still applies. Now this chart, I was just grabbing uh, the 2000, well, it's hard to see it down here. Oh, let's see, what can I do? I can go, and what I'm trying to get at is that in 2011, uh, when silver hit its high, so did this. This is hard to read. It says 36.60. We need that in the calculation. Um, so here's the calculations for the silver miner, which I'm not recommending, but I, I did buy some myself. There's not that many silver miners, pure silver miners. Uh, I mean, uh, miners that are considered primarily silver miners. There's not that many that I found. Please share in the comments if you have some other ones. So far, I've actually got P A A S S and S S R M, and this is C D E. What I what I was just looking at is called Coyer Mining. Um, so here's the calculations for uh, 
I just I just take that ratio and multiply by the mining price. It's a pretty simple calculation. I come up with two hundred and seventy dollars a share, so it can go from three to two hundred seventy. That's an eighty nine hundred percent return over four years. Uh, there's the average uh, yearly rate, quite a bit better than a CD by many thousands of times. Uh, if you can handle the volatility. Yeah, okay. So, conclusion is just simple. I just said, well, what if you put 10,000 in uh, and you followed through? That would be 890,000 in four years. So it's motivational. Uh, and, you know, tolerance to a high volatility. If you're, if you're, it would be required for dealing with something like this because it goes up and down uh, pretty volatile. That's, that shows it there. It's down at the low end of its range. Uh, this is an old shot. It was actually down here when I bought it, but it's pretty much the risk is, you know, wherever you get in, anything down here is going to be good because it's going to go through that and then it's going to go much higher is perhaps the only point of the video. Uh, maybe, maybe you don't believe it's going to make it to 270, but it could. And uh, that's about it. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. I think that's plenty long enough. Uh, again, just motivation. Uh, uh, give it a try if you want to. And good luck.